guys, I'm here with Abe hey. and Cameron and Liana, Hi. and we are doing a Haunted Mansion tour. So welcome, Foolish Mortals, to Disney's Happiest Haunts <laughs> Tour. My name is Cody and I will be your guide as we explore the many stories and spirits of one of Disneyland's most treasured attractions, the Haunted Mansion. Let me just paint a picture for you real quickly. It's 1951 and the Walt Disney Studios was very successful when it came to film and television. He wanted to create a place that children and parents alike can go and have fun and explore different three-dimensional realms. Now, he saw this humble orange grove here in Anaheim, California, but he envisioned it into something bigger, a magic kingdom. The BBC interview in London, he once expressed his sympathy for all of the homeless ghosts across the world, and he stated he wanted to give them a retirement home right here in Main Street or in Disneyland. He said the nature of a ghost is that they constantly need to perform, and therefore they need an audience. So of course we never saw that in Main Street, but eventually in 1958, Disneyland Park maps started to feature a new land right outside of Frontierland, and it was known as New Orleans Square. Were just a few examples of the many different stories that came about as the Haunted House project. From the conceptualization of the Haunted House to the completion of our Haunted Mansion, there were many different stories that came to play. We'll probably touch base on a few of those stories throughout our tour today, so look forward to that. And then another idea was to have Walt Disney guide his guests through a pre-recorded audio track that took them from room to room. So a few strange different concepts, obviously a little bit different than the Haunted Mansion we see today. Not everyone knows, but the Tomorrowland, or Tomorrowland itself actually has a great influence on the Haunted Mansion that we know today. The People Mover really opened up the idea that we can have a continuous movement type ride cycle or ride system. So Bob Burr, he is an engineer in Disney Legend, he was sitting in Imagineering headquarters when he was, and he was twisting an apple by the stem, kind of rotating around, and he realized, he thought to himself, why don't we use this idea of the People Mover and create a technology that can kind of encourage the guests or the audience to look a certain way focus their attention on a certain show scene or character or element of the show we're trying to destroy. Does anyone know what this technology is? Yes, audio animatronics! Yeah, so the first Disney attraction to feature this technology was none other than Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. Ophelia here is one of the earliest examples of audio animatronics uh, that can be found inside of Disneyland. And she works by a couple of connectors that plug into the back, her backside here. Uh, one of the connectors feeds in air pressure, a second one feeds in electricity. And the combination of these two allows her to have uh, basic lifelike movements. Now, of course, several years down the line, we would have attractions like Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln and Pirates of the Caribbean that would introduce hydraulics into the audio animatronic figures, which is how we get a lot more uh, lifelike fluid movement inside of our audio animatronics today. Now, we would like to give everyone an opportunity to take a photo with Ophelia. Cookies? What? Cookie. Cookie. Enjoy. Have a great break. Hey, sorry, you can't have my cookie, kid. Um, welcome to the Rivers of America in Frontierland, right over here. We're right next door to New Orleans, where right? we've talked about a lot today throughout our tour. Now, I did mention a few stories earlier that I did want to kind of dive deeper into, and that was one uh, that ties Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion together, and that might be the one of the sea captain. Now, legends or rumors told of a sea captain who had just recently purchased an estate, and he brought his new bride home to his estate. He told her that when he was away out at sea, that she was able to roam about wherever she liked, she could go in any room except one, and that was the attic. Now one day while he was away, she found herself ascending this creaking staircase and she opened the door and she found treasures from all over the world. Now immediately she was distraught and realized that her beloved sea I captain was nothing else him. than a dirty, lying pirate. And of course, fate had at that very moment, the sea captain just got home, he opened the door, he went upstairs to take his newly found treasures to the attic to his trove and he found his beloved bride depressed in realization that her sea captain was just a pirate. Now he flew into an overwhelming rage and she ended up accidentally falling out of the top floor attic window to her demise. Now from that very moment, the house grew cold. The maids and butlers grew lethargic and the sea captain started to age very rapidly. He reached out to Madame Leota, who was the town oracle at the time, and he asked her to conjure up the spirits to bring his lovely wife back from the dead. 
Now she tried with all her might, and unfortunately she failed, leaving the sea captain even more sad and depressed than the time before. He realized the only way to join his bride would be in the afterlife, and so you might even see him hanging around in the <laughs> portrait gallery as you first enter the haunted mansion. I'm sure most of us know what I'm talking about. I know some of us were talking about Constance earlier today. Now, you normally first see Constance in the attic scene that I'm sure most of us are familiar with, and you see the five different portraits. As you go deeper and deeper into the attic, you notice that it's her five different weddings. She's wearing the same wedding dress in every portrait, except there's one thing that's slightly different, and is that the pearls around her neck. She gains a strand of pearls with every uh, wedding. Now, in another scene, you might see her actually. Is anyone familiar with where you see her first? I mentioned it earlier. So the portrait gallery, you see a picture of this, a old woman, and she's holding a rose and she's sniffing. Oh, yeah. And as the room begins to stretch and you see more and more of the portrait, you realize that it's Constance the Bride sitting on top of a gravestone. And that gravestone is that for her late husband George, who has found his end at the end of an axe. So welcome to the infamous Front Street, a very popular spot in New Orleans Square. Now, not many people know this, but the balcony we have right here actually plays a little bit of a subtle nod to the Haunted Mansion. They might say, uh, when it talks about Madame Leona, we're not entirely sure where she came about in the beginning. Even the stories that we have for the Haunted Mansion don't necessarily say where Madame Leona came about. Some people say that it was a voodoo spell gone wrong, and others might tie it even back to the sea captain story and his bride. They're not entirely sure how she got trapped in that crystal ball to begin with. The face of Madame Leota is a very interesting story as well. I'm sure maybe a few of you have heard the story. But originally, the face was going to go to an Imagineer at the time named Harriet Burns. She was working very closely with Walt and the Imagineers on the Haunted Mansion project. And they asked her to do a fitting to get ready for this um, oracle. They already had the size that they wanted set up. And when she did the fitting, unfortunately, her eyes were too close apart and her facial, facial features were much too small. And so they then reached out to another lady, just they said for a test subject. Her name was Leota Toombs. Her co workers called her Lee. Now she started as um, an animator, she worked in the Egan Paint department. Studios. And so they asked her to come in for a test fitting of this makeup and this figure, and maybe it was a look of magic in her eye or possibly a spark of destiny, but that very same day she found herself in the studio makeup department, and she was getting the full fitting, the full makeup, and they were recording her face to get ready to do these projections for our horrible movie, Madame Leota. Now, her daughter just so happens to be another very famous Imagineer, Kim Irvine, I'm sure most of us have heard of Kim. She's done almost everything in Disneyland Park, um, to be fair. She's worked on the Dream Suite, Club 33, and many other things if you've ever taken a look at her concept art. But she remembers her mom coming home that very same day because she said that her mom's face uh, terrified her, basically, when she came home as a little girl. Uh, and so that's a very special story they, stuff they, they share. But very interestingly enough, uh, when it came time to create the show scenes or the ornament scene for our Holiday Mansion overlay, they came to Kim Irvine because of her striking resemblance to her mother. So very interesting there. So her mother's face is seen in the traditional haunted mansion and then Kim Irvine representing her mother is there as well. Much speculation when it comes to the exterior design of the haunted mansion. Some say it looks like the Stanton house in Natchez, Mississippi. Others might say it looks a little bit more like the Evergreen House in Baltimore. And then some beg to differ and say that it looks like the Shipley Lidecker House that was once, uh, once in Baltimore as well. Now the truth is, just like Main Street USA, it's actually a combination of many different exterior designs, all originating from 1850s architecture in the South. The Imagineers, obviously there were many of them, it wasn't just one who came up with the concept art, or who came up with the idea of the exterior design. So they all kind of came into play and they said, I want it to look like this, or I want it to look like this. So yes, it does bear a striking resemblance to those three locations, but there's plenty of that all adds into our exterior design. Interesting task the Imagineers found when they were doing the construction of the Haunted Mansion was that they needed to find a way to get the guests underground and through this earthen berm we're standing on right here where the train tracks go to get the guests to the show building that lies just on the other side of the train tracks. That is why we're standing here. <laughs> so kind of paint that picture for you. So yes, the guests do go underground underneath this right here, to that show building over there. When they were recreating the Haunted Mansions in other Disney parks, they had to find a way to make the illusion of the room stretching without it actually stretching. 
or going underground, I should say. So yes, in case you're wondering, we are the only Disney park that has a haunted mansion where we actually go underground. So it's pretty special. Yeah, in 1963, we had the full facade in the front portion of the haunted mansion. It was up and it was ready for guests to see. Now for six years, it left guests wondering what exactly was happening behind these doors. Now, when guests finally went on the attraction opening day, once again, it was August 9th, 1969, people came from across the world to experience what exactly they might find inside. Just like the Enchanted Tea Hero, but on a whole nother scale, guests were in complete awe when they left. They had no idea that they came face to face with a real life ghost, and they were just shocked. They were wondering, how is this technology possible? That of a special effect we call Pepper's Ghost. And that is the ghost, or the scene we see in the ballroom, where the ghosts are dancing around and might reappear or disappear. Um, even to this day, you see them going through the Christmas tree as they're there inside the haunted mansion. Now, that effect originally came about from mastermind Yale Gracie, who's another Imagineer who had a big part in the Haunted Mansion. And you might even see a tombstone inside the mansion that says, Master Gracie laid to rest, no morning please at his request. Now, when the Haunted Mansion was opened in 1869, there was this ghostly type creature who was holding a hat box in his hand. Every few seconds, his head would be on top of his shoulders, just like all of us, and then in a blink of an eye, it would disappear from his head, Reappear in the hat box that you found. Now, this effect was possibly too good because it actually didn't work. Apparently. And so, no one knows necessarily when it went away, but most say that it was only a few days after opening in 1969 that it disappeared for good. Imagineers could not find it whatsoever, and then fortunately, just a year or two ago, less than two years ago, they found a box in the attic that was labeled hat box. And she still happened to be able to hat box goes. So they did bring it back for the diamond celebration, which kicked off last uh, May. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yes. Oh, yay. And this pin's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Worth it. I like it. Worth it. <laughs> On behalf of myself and the guided tours team, I want to thank you so much for being here today. We finished the tour! Woo! We just use our uh, Haunted Mansion Fast Passes because Haunted Mansion Holiday is amazing. And yeah, you should check out this tour this year if there's still time left, but definitely next year because the pin is so cool. The last tour I have to do now is the Walk in Walt's Footsteps tour, which I'm sure me and Abe will do at some point Eventually. in the future. When they open up the apartment, right? Yeah, right? for real.